Hello everyone, this is Kanika here for explaining the topic entitled Chemotherapy of Urinary Tract Infections. For an understanding, I have divided the topic in two parts, part 1 and part 2. Part 1 will cover introduction, sign and symptoms, risk factors, pathophysiology and pharmacology. Now, what is urinary tract in infection? So, how many urinary tract ko do hisso me divide kara hai that is upper urinary tract and lower urinary tract. Upper urinary tract consists of kidneys and ureters and the lower urinary tract contains bladder and urethra. Koi bhi infection via urethra extended upwards towards kidney will be considered as urinary tract infection. Now, in this slide, we'll be covering risk factors and sign and symptoms and clinical indications of urinary tract infections. As you can see, these are the causative agents that is, it may be E. coli, enterobacteria, proteus and chlamydia or the infection can also be via catheterization. So now, risk factors, if we talk about risk factors, then which people are the most affected by this disease? So there will be pregnant lady uh, at the time of sexual intercourse during menopause period after catheterization by certain birth control agents agar koi insaan kisi ke andar urinary tract abnormality ya blockage hai to wo bhi iske liye bahut prone hoga sign and symptoms ki agar hum baat kare to dysuria that is discomfort while urinating itching sensation burning sensation while urinating iska pehla sign and symptom hai second is flank pain that is uh, upper abdominal region mein pain hona frequency or urgency to urinate iska ek bahut important uh, sign uh, hai uh, next is hematuria that is blood in urine offensive smell of urine suprapubic discomfort malaise malaise means feeling of discomfort vomiting rigors rigors is sudden feeling of cold with shivering back pain and septicemia septicemia is one of the most special feature of this infection talking about clinical indications there are three main clinical indi indications that are uh, the result of tra urinary tract infection when we talk about urethra the lower part of whole urinary tract uh, then ure urethritis is the uh, is the indication that is inflammation of urethra then going upwards cystitis is inflammation of bladder this region bladder then comes pyelonephritis that is inflammation above the bladder that is inflammation of kidney so next we'll discuss pathophysiology that is why q ye disease q ho rahi hai so agar hum pathophysiology ki baat kare to hame pata hai ki causative agents koi bhi ho sakte hain to agar ye causative agents kisi bhi wajah se enter karte hain body ke andar to uh, humara urethra ke through ye body uh, 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 travel karte hain aur wahan ja kar jaisa humne pata hai insano mein bhi agar hum for example let's say uh, agar do log koi khade hain to dheere 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 wahan bheed padne lagti hai waisi microbes ki tendency humse zyada hoti hai microbes ek microbe ek dusre ko multiply karte hain aur wahan pe colony colony create karte hain that leads to colonization in urethra and bladder next is uh, is colonization ki wajah se ek membrane ban jati hai kyu kyunki jab koi bahar se disease aati hai body ke andar to body apna immune response activate karti hai aur us bimari se ladne ki koshish karti hai is koshish ke andar body kuch uh, antibodies ko form karti hai meanwhile neutrophils infiltrate hote hain us procedure ke dauran and, and and further which leads to multiplication of bacteria that is virulence or of bacteria further agar kisi wajah se ye treat ye issue nahi uh, sahi se treat ho pata to ye infection bladder se upar ki taraf extend karta hai into kidney and same jo procedure hamara bladder mein hua tha wahi cheez kidney mein hoti that is colonization in kidney that is also can be uh, led to bacteremia in other words, if I explain you that if this is your bladder, then as the bacteria enter your urethra, then there will be a multiplication of multiplication of bacteria. This will lead neutrophils ka production and infiltration. Hoga, and that will lead to a biofilm, which uh, adheres to the adhere the membrane. Pe, aur jiski se multiplication zyada aur zyada hoti hai aur infection badhta jata hai dheere dheere ye protrude karega into ureters 
and so on. So this is the process flow of infection 1, 2 and 3. Next, we'll continue this to classification of drug. Classification of drug treatment. Hum kya treatment use kar rahe urinary tract infection ke liye? So, uh, the, the UTI drugs are classified into two categories, antimicrobial drugs and analgesics. Antimicrobial drugs can be subdivided into three drugs, nitrofurantoin, methanamine and cotrimoxazole. Cotrimoxazole adds or acts as an adjuvant therapy for the treatment of UTI. And some, prescribe, uh, some physicians also prescribe nalidic acid for uh, the treatment of UTI. Analgesic, UTI analgesic includes phen phenazopyridine. Talking about uh, the pharmacology of the drugs, for un better understanding, I have divided these drugs into two sections in a tabular form, that is nitrofurantine and methanamine. So, for uh, distinguishing these two drugs, on the basis of type of action, I can say that nitrofurantoin is a bacteriostatic drug. Bacteriostatic, as the name suggests, static ka matlab hota hai ki growth ko stop karna and not killing. And sidle means killing the bacteria. So, static. Dono drugs bacteriostatic nature ki hoti hai. But in, in the presence of acidic pH, they become bactericidal. This is most important point to be noted that both the drugs are bacteriostatic in nature, but at higher pH and acidic in acidic pH, uh, in lower pH, uh, they, both of the drugs become bactericidal. If I talk about mechanism of methanamine, then methanamine is a methanamine pro-drug that is in active form in the body. Mein jate hi. But as I said, in acidic pH, in lower pH of urine, they get converted or hydrolyzed into ammonia and formaldehyde. And we know that formaldehyde is an active agent and acts as active agent in the body to show its further actions. Now, talking about pharmacokinetics, I have subdivided the pharmacokinetics topic in absorption, metabolism, T half and excretion. Nitrofurantoin and methanamine both are orally administered, but methanamine has a special feature of being administered orally in organic salt forms only and that too in enteric coated tablets. Further, uh, talking about metabolism, nitrofurantoin is rapidly absorbed uh, metabol sorry, metabolized in uh, via liver and other tissues and methanamine as I have discussed above, it is hydrolyzed into ammonia and formaldehyde to produce active product that is active in the body. T half of both the drugs uh, is uh, for nitrofurantoin, it is maximum one hour that is 30 to 60 minutes and for methanamine it's, th it's three to four hours. Uh, excretion, both are excreted in unchanged form via urine. Considering interactions and contraindication, it is very important to know that probenicid is an important drug which interacts and inhibits the tubular secretion and uh, reduce urinary concentration of nitrofurantoin. Now, what is the logic of, uh, behind this that uh, it, it reduces or inhibits the tubular secretion? The logic uh, here is that probenicid converts urea into ammonia and we know that ammonia is an alkaline agent it has it works in al it creates alkaline ph but we know that nitrofurantoin works best in acidic ph that is why in the presence of probenicid nitrofurantoin delays its action or we can say that it, it, its action in, is inhibited its tubular secretion is inhibited further in renal excreted uh, in renal excretion is reduced in azotemic patients and uh, and the drug is contraindicated specifically contraindicated in renal patients and pregnancy and neonates uh, further methamine has many of the um, interaction and contraindications but uh, specifically bleeding with warfarin hydroxycumarin acinocumarol is important ones talking about adverse effects gastrointestinal tolerance diarrhea epigastric pain fever chill leukopenia neurological effects with long-term use uh, these are some of the adverse effects and for better understanding i have created a mnemonic that is den led to fever and chills d stands for as you can see they are abbreviated in brackets so this is for a better understanding you can learn this den led to fever and chills 
okay and this is methanamy gastritis due to release formaldehyde in stomach cystitis and hematuria are related with high doses only and it's mnemonic is he has gastric cystitis talking about uses this is important to know that lower uti without prostatitis can be cured by nitrofurantoin and acute infections with e coli can be uh, treated with this dose 5 to 7 mg per kg per day but only after prescription from doctor and a long term treatment of prophylaxis of uti post catheterization in women with cystitis can also be cured further in, uh, in talking about methamy it is not effective for the treatment as i said for uh, nitrofurantoin uh, it is not effective for treatment for of prof or prophylaxis of uti post catheterization in women with cystitis and uh, but it is effective for treating chronic and resistant type urinary tract infections last but not the least talking about urinary analgesic that is phenazopyridine it is active at dose of 200 to 400 mg uh, tds it can be also termed uh, featureized or as orange urine uh, which has analgesic action use for it is it, is, it provides symptomatic relief of urgency and burning and sensation and side effect related to these drug is epigastric pain and nausea so thank you for listening and uh, i'll be continuing this session in part 2 of this topic only thank you